Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel where all of my neurodivergent niche interests come to play. And today we are talking about handbags again with another review. I'm actually pretty pleased with how well my last review did, the Tory Burch Lee Radzi Will What's in My Bag Plus review. If you haven't seen that, I will leave it down below. But considering how many subscribers I have and how many views that video got, it's a pretty good ratio. And considering the fact that purse reviews and reviewing things and giving y'all information is something that brings me joy, I'm pretty excited to have this be a continuous theme, uh, video, whatever, on my channel. Hoping to maybe be pumping one of these reviews out, like, maybe once a month, depending on how I feel. Um, I've got at least 12 bags I could review, so that'll at least get me through a year. And obviously that depends if there are any bags or anything that pops up that maybe one of y'all want to recommend down below that you would like me to review. Again, reviewing products and things that interest me and stuff like that and sharing information and research is something that I really enjoy doing as a YouTuber. So moving forward, like I said, pretty stinking excited to keep doing these. But for now, for the sake of this video, we are going to be reviewing a bag that brings me no small amount of joy to share with y'all. The Mulberry Bay's Water Tote, specifically in heavy grain. I'm not entirely sure what color this is. I will leave it here as well as a link down below. Although I'm not entirely sure if this color is sold out and I did not pay full price for this. I purchased it secondhand, which if you don't know, you know now that I strongly advocate for and really like to 99.99999% of the time purchase my bags, especially things that are considered luxury goods secondhand. It's my small attempt at making my um, consumerist choices feel a little bit better, slightly more sustainable by, again, working that secondhand market. This is honestly a bag that I had wanted for an exceptionally long amount of time. I am part of a handbag subreddit on Reddit, obviously. I'd post in there about another bag that kind of had a similar aesthetic, and I was like, what do you guys think about this? Do you think it would be a good bag to get in lieu of this? Because typically, to get one of these even second hands is muy dinero. And someone so happened to message me and was like, hey... I'm, I'm happen, happening to be selling my Mulberry Bay's water, and it just by sheer glorious, wonderful coincidence, it happened to be in this disgustingly amazing, glorious green. There is, I, I, I could not have picked from the site a more perfect bag than this one. So absolute shout out to them for giving me the secondhand opportunity. Um, I, 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 I secondhand shopping opportunity that dreams are made of when it comes to this sort of find like it could not I pulled it out of the bag and just words escaped me I had not been this enamored enraptured and in love instantly in love with a bag quite like um the Tory Burch Lee Radzi Will or my Fendi Peekaboos just the absolute breath taken out of me. This is, I'm not going to do it now because I have skincare on my face and I don't want to put skincare all over my bag, but you just hold it and press it to your face and <sighs> the smell of high quality leather and, and, and the sensation and the feeling of quality construction. You know, I try to be very, very realistic when it comes to reviewing things, especially things that tout themselves as being, you know, luxury designer and things that cost a lot of money. And these are one of those things where I'm like, yeah, the quality, it is beautiful. It is delicious. It is decadent. And I just... Words are difficult to describe the love I have for this thing. I've been lugging this thing around now for over a month at this point, and it's a great time because I have got a shit ton of stuff up in this bag. Like, I've got stuff down in the bottom, just all kinds of shit, which is great because this bag holds 
a lot. Like you can see just the massive amount of crap I've got shoved in here. You can actually make it wider here so it can hold even more stuff. It really is just a never ending, amazing, bottomless bag of holding pit. Just absolutely, which is perfect to show you all just how much it can fit. Now I'm not gonna go into a whole like what's in my bag. If you wanna see that again, look at the review down below. Not a lot has changed in what I'm carrying from one bag to, to the other. So I'm just gonna kind of breeze through and show you how much it can hold just for reference and not actually take a lot of time going through what's in here. So let's go through what's in here. My lighting is probably gonna go in and out with intensity. I apologize. I have the bag down here. We have got in here, which is important because this has my notes. This is the YouTube notebook that I carry around with me everywhere all the time. And just so everyone knows, this is a everyday bag for me. This is the bag that I take to my slum uh, overnight shift job at a uh, hotel. And as I do like to say, I am not nice. I am not gentle. I am very um, abusive, hard, rough, whatever with my bags. I'm not looking for something that I need to baby. Two no more notebooks. One is my grimoire and one is my just my my personal affirmation journal reminding myself that I am in fact worth it. I've got this here which has my toothbrush and toothpaste in it. Got a hairbrush going on here. Hand cream because what is life without hand cream? My wallet that has also not changed. My massive pen and charging holding thing. I've got all kinds of quote unquote practical stuff going on in there. Have my little medical pouch, which has got all good things like hair ties, nail clips, extra chapstick, nail clippers, nail files, eye drops, tampons, all those necessary things that you might need. As I said in my previous review, between um, bags and what I have in the contents of my bags and my girlfriend's cargo pants, we should be covered in any sort of homosexual situation that may arise. And now that we've gotten all that out of the bag, I can show you sort of just how massive this is. Just the depths of the inner pit that is this bag. Got a jewelry box here because I was showing Emma the jewelry my mom bought me for Christmas, which I'll show y'all. She got me this pretty one here. Actually, this one here that I'm wearing. This is Moss Agate. She got me these earrings as well, as well as these earrings here. But now that I have shown her, I can close this up and go put it with my jewelry and take it out of my bag. And as I'm going through this, I will say, God bless the lady, or I don't know if it was a li God bless the person who sold this to me and sold it to me with a liner, with freaking pockets and such in it like this. See, goes all the way around the side of the bag because otherwise the mulberry bags are just one big giant pit of leather. I have got hot chocolate. I have got Ulta gift card from Christmas from my girlfriend's mother. Pure aqua energy squirt flavor caffeine because without caffeine I would die. We've got some nail polish, some of this which I put or should have put on before I started filming. A bag of Christmas candy a wide assortment of said tampons because you know what is a handbag without a crap ton, a handful of tampons down in the bottom of it, or is that just me? I try to keep them in a nice little container in my handbag, but sometimes when you gotta go, you gotta go, you just throw them in there and run out. I have an emergency blanket that my girlfriend gave me because like I like to say, she likes to be prepared and she likes me to be prepared. So I have one of these in here in my purse and I have one in the glove compartment of my car thanks to her. Just more hair ties, um, some paycheck stubs, and just a whole bunch of stuff that ends up down in the bottom of the bag. Now with everything dumped out of here you really can see just how big this bag is and the fact that you can take it and these straps here, right here, 
you can take and make them um, longer so that this expands out more. I like the look of it being more cinched up top like that, but this bag does have a lot of versatility to it. This is the lining that was put in it. This is by uh, Samorga. I'm not sure it was in the bag. Bless the person for that. But with that out, taking a look in, it is just that wonderful, beautiful leather interior. You just, whew, that's a good shit. Beautiful, massive, expansive. This bag will hold your everything as well as the kitchen sink and probably then some. And just to give you all an idea of again, how much you can put in this, this is the bag. And that's all the shit I had crammed into the bag and it was you know even despite it being all crammed and gnarly in there it was still pretty viable of a bag like I didn't feel like there was so much stuff that I didn't know where anything was or I couldn't get into anything I typically tend to have a lot of extra stuff in my bag so if that's something that you don't do then maybe that's something to consider but for me and how much crap I tend to carry around with me on a regular basis I find that it works really really well. I've got some notes here just so that I get some of the facts straight on this when it comes to giving you guys bag reviews because I do purchase my bags second hand. Um, I like to let y'all know like regular retail price, what the typical secondhand market price is, as well as what I paid for and where I got my bags from. Now, the Bayswater was originally created and released in 2003 and established itself as a really like must have it girl sort of bag. And I feel like it's one that even though strictly speaking, it's been on the market for so long, is still, along with a lot of other Mulberry's classic designs, as well as their new ones, is its quality and style that I believe stands the test of time, despite, you know, other things continuously getting released and other designs. I think this is something that will continuously look luxurious and classy without being freakishly embellished and branded. Now, they claim in one article I read about Mulberry was that they had maintained the prices on their bags for like an extended period of time, although on the handbag subreddit, someone had commented about the Mulberry prices rising. Um, so I'm not entirely sure about, you know, the truthfulness of them keeping their prices. I feel like prices in today's economy, failing, failing economy, prices just keep rising and rising regardless. But on an average, if you're going to buy a uh, Mulberry, uh, the Bayswater, just right off the site or somewhere like Nordstrom or Saks or wherever it is that they sell them, expect to pay around $1,200 and up. Now that is for brand spanking new, a variety of colors, all sorts of different leather finishes. They've got full grain, which is what this is. It is this nice, really firm, yet supple, luxurious leather. I really, I think just another term for this, they call this heavy grain. There's also light grain, I think, small grain. I look at this and I'm like, oh, pebbled leather, right? That's what it's called, right? Pebbled, which personally I really, really, really like in a bag. Like you would have hear, heard me say in the Tory Burch review that pebbled leather I really love and appreciate in a bag, especially if one I'm planning on using as an everyday bag because it is such a hardy, resistant type of leather. You can bang it around, rough it up, scuff it up, and then with some gentle TLC, you can really keep it in just a wonderful condition. Um, there are a couple uh, bag reviews, a couple um, restoration um, videos on YouTube that I've seen about uh, mulberry bags and Bayswaters that have, you know, are, you know, 20 plus years, you know, the bag came out in 2003, so it's 2024 now, so 2021 years that look absolutely amazing. Uh, I love pebbled leather also for how it weathers and ages. I will put a clip here. Um, 
I have got uh, three other Mulberry Bays waters that are not anywhere near in the new condition, the new newish whatever condition this is in. And I'll show you in the footage how one thing I love about Mulberry and why I advocate for it as a brand that I you know, recommend as a brand that I purchase from is looking at and viewing vintage to newer and just even amongst these four different Bayes waters and the time period um, between them, you can still see that quality in the, in the leather, in the stitching, in the craftsmanship. And it really is a hallmark to purchasing something for a bit more money that when you put the effort into it is going to last you a really long time. When it comes to recommending and reviewing and using handbags, I really like to have a standard of quality that it comes to when I'm making um, purchasing recommendations. There just really is something attractive to me about a bag that ages well and like looks just as good, if not better, however many years down the road from when you purchase it. Like there's something exciting about a new and a fresh and a pristine bag, but there's also something, I love a bag that's aged and has character and is able to, again, be used and manhandled and still keep that beautiful quality that it started out with, which hopefully is the reason you know, why you purchased it in the first place. I was exceptionally, exceptionally lucky and I was able to get a hold of mine for $400, which to get a Mulberry Bayswater, especially in this condition for $400, ab dreams, dr secondhand dreams are made of this. One thing that makes this bag really attractive, especially on the site, is the fact that they have 12 colors available with a uh, multitude of different types of leathers. They have the heavy grain, the light, light grain, they have Silky Kid, um, Napa. They've got one new now that's like a puffer style, which I honestly objectively hate because it... I, puff puff bags puffy leather bags um kind of give me a because uh, usually they're made out of softer material again it leads towards that napa and or the lambskin things that are need to be babied a bit more whereas i prefer a nice heavy heavy grain yeah hearty they also have the um original veggie tanned leather which is also gorgeous, luxurious, amazing weathers like a dream. And I will admit that at some point I would absolutely love to have, I mean, honestly, any of their bags in this color, but specifically I would give my left something, anything to have the Bayswater in the new shade Malachite, because I mean, Malachite for one thing and just the absolute glorious, gloriousness that is this color, like, like this color and that green are like two perfection. And they obviously also have, you know, the neutrals like black and brown chalk and just all of those nice, simple statement neutral colors that are going to go with a wide variety of wardrobes. And there are so many pluses to this bag for me. There are so many things that have really solidified and established this as a staple for me. I kid you not when I say again that there has not been a bag since those two others, since then till this, that has literally just taken my breath away from the first moment that I pulled it out to still using it today. Like I'll still just sometimes look over at it and just <sighs> just sigh that dreamy sigh of happiness. One of which being the absolutely glorious attention to detail and quality. This is a fairly heavy bag, though after I've hoisted it around for a while, it's a lot less, oh, this is heavy than when I first got it. If you're familiar with the Tory Burchley Razzie Will or the Fendi Peekaboo, I would say it's around that size, probably closer to the Tory Burch and maybe like a peekaboo and a half. I would actually say they're probably all about the same weight. We've got the Bayswater right here. 
we've got the Tory Birch right here and then a Fendi Peekaboo right here. This is the large size, I believe, which for a larger work bag is my favorite size, though for an everyday kind of less hauling around bag, I really like the medium size. But after feeling them all, if you're familiar with these, it's about that same weight category. And I will admit there is something to be said and something that I appreciate from a piece of leather good that's got got a bit of heft to it that's one of the signs of a fake bag a lot of times is it'll be a little bit suspiciously light because i have found that at least in a lot of the bags that i have higher quality leather is going to have a little bit more heft to it and feel a bit more just it just it just feels really nice obviously one of the elephants in the room is going to be kind of like the style of this if you're familiar with like a lot of it bags and a lot of really popular designer bags you're gonna look at this and think hmm, is this a little is this a little birkin -y? a little little hermes-esque in my personal opinion i actually like this more than um uh there is a part of me i will never ever 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 be able to own anything Hermes that's just beyond any sort of price point that I'm able to justifiably spend but there is a part of me that's like you know I, I, I would I would love I love a beat up absolutely trashed to just absolute shit Birkin I just I, I want one that's beaten I want some that has seen some shit because again I like a bag that shows that it has weathered well. A hallmark to me of a quality handbag, especially if it's touting itself as luxury, is going to be one that can be taken through hell and back and still look absolutely fantastic. However, if I'm being perfectly honest, I really, really like the clean, smooth, very subtle aesthetic of this. I appreciate the minimal branding. We've got the little little mulberry tree there, the little, little postman's lock, the Hallmark postman's lock. And I feel it just looks sophisticated and clean. I know that it's a very big it bag and that a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, a lot of whatever, a lot of people know this bag, but I feel like it's potentially maybe a little bit less pretentious. It gives that really nice vibe of high quality luxury without it being like, oh, I'm screaming designer. And there's something to be said about, you know, very ostentatious, obvious branding. I like things on both ends of the spectrum. But for me, this is like peak uh, bag aesthetic where it really is the structure and the craftsmanship and the quality of the le leather and the style and design really speaks for itself when you look at it without having to really, you know, need a lot of explanation. It's got the feeties on the bottom. The only thing I don't like about the small ones, as I will show you in the clip you will have seen, is that they do not have feeties on the bottom. Simply everything about this bag is just a joy and a pleasure to look at again. I love I don't know if anyone else, I mean, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I love the fact that I can take the front flap and fold it back and have it like that. So basically, if I'm like carrying it somewhere or I have it in the seat beside me, this is how I have it without having to be fucking around with the flap here. And I just, I just like that as a little like, oh, it's just you know, easy to open just like that. Again, it's just got so many style elements and so many bits to it that really make this such a fantastically utilitarian bag for something that is solid, can be flung around and carried around and rolled around, you know, it's just got so many different things going for it. It's got style, aesthetic, quality. I really appreciate what you can get these for on the secondhand market. A lot of Mulberry stuff really retains its value, but these are still a bag that you can get in the five to $800 range, which is honestly, when it comes to purchasing secondhand, I like purchasing for 
50, at least 50% off what it would have been regular retail, less depending on if it's like old or if it's vintage. And those are two different classifications that we'll talk about in later videos. Whereas older is less expensive typically, unless it becomes vintage. When you take into consideration the amount of bag that you can get for even that five to eight hundred dollar range, investing that in something secondhand that is the type of quality this is compared to maybe something else that you could have gotten for the same price, I think there is a lot of un, um, unutilized. I know that secondhand is becoming more of a thing and you know and then we've got like you know on time uh, online realtor you know like the real real and other things sort of we'll talk about that later about you know oh all the other all the high-end brands are like oh reduce reuse recycle but reduce reuse recycle through us so that we can keep getting money and there's all sorts of sustainable whatever's with that but with that being said, with all those secondhand um, options and being able to buy such a good amount of quality, I think is well worth looking into purchasing secondhand. Or if you want to go full price, obviously I didn't pay for mine full price, but I can attest by a lot of other testimonies from people on the handbag subreddit. I feel like Mulberry is one of the most consistent quality and consistent good customer um, service experience. People, I haven't really seen people post anything negative about their mulberry bag experiences. The consensus seems to be generally pretty positive about this brand and about this bag. I mean, there's a reason it's iconic and luxurious and beautiful and all those absolutely wonderful adjectives that I could use to describe this. I feel like if you are a lover of just straight, if you're a lover of handbags, you're a lover of just quality leather goods, I don't think you can go wrong with um, investing in something mulberry, whether it be vintage or something that's newer. I have both ends of the spectrum getting this. I honestly didn't realize how new it was. Like, again, blown away. But even other mulberry designs, I have one of their Alexa bags. Eventually I'll do a um, mulberry um, bag collection video. But for now, I I strongly, I, I love this bag. I think for the price, even for what you can pay for it, compared to other things on the market, especially when you're thinking about buying something that's even higher priced, like say if you are going into Hermes or Prada or Fendi or a lot of those other ones, you know, bags that are costing two, three, four, uh, five thousand dollars. There's a Fendi origami bag that I want that I'm not going to get because it's new and it's currently like thirty six hundred dollars and that's not going to happen. I find that Mulberry is that excellent like step above coach because coach contemporary can also be extremely expensive as well. I come from a majorly, majorly, I come from a majority of secondhand experiences, not, you know, firsthand retail through the site, but just long story short, beautiful, amazing quality, this bag, I mean, I have been rough and tumble with it. I've only been using it for like a month and a half, but I have not been nice and easy on this bag. I have run it around, thrown it into my car, thrown it over there, thrown it over there, put it on the ground. My girlfriend screams, you paid for it, but you pick it up off the ground. It's like, okay, it's got feet, I don't care. From so many standpoints, to style, to structure, to craftsmanship, to the quality of the leather, the joy I get from carrying and using this bag aesthetic wise. This is honestly a five out of five, 10 out of 10 for me. Would highly, highly recommend. I am honestly, I'm gonna be doing a uh, bag wish list in 2024. And in 2024, I'm always, I'm gonna be open to the idea of adding more Mulberry to my collection, whether it is a Bayswater, another Alexa, or another Mulberry design, just from what I have seen in my experience and from what I've heard, Mulberry has proven itself to be a very consistent, high quality brand. 
and I honestly will take that over any kind of ostentatious or it branding. Although, like I said, if someone came up to me and were like, here's a beat up, abused Birkin, I would not say no. But this bag has really, really like slated, satiated, whatever, taken that like that desire, that lust for the Birkin and kind of like set it on the back burner because I just love the look of this bag so much. I honestly think it exudes a less pretentious, you know, sense of luxury. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, I'm trying to include a little bit more information, like with like price point and history of a bag. I really want to give you guys like details so you can make up you know, what's your, what ugh. give you details so you can make up your mind how you want. If you want to purchase secondhand, if you want to purchase straight from the store, I'm just giving you guys as my experiences with these goods. I hope that offers at least a starting point for you guys. I really appreciate the positivity that I got on my last review. I look forward to doing many more of these for you all. Definitely let me know what you think down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video or vlog. Bye!